<laughs> All right, this video is for the last few questions, six through nine of your part one of your test review. So we have a sequence, negative four, eight, negative 16, 32. You have to first decide what type of sequence it is and then write the formula. So the first part here, um, determine the type of sequence. Well, notice that the signs are alternating, so it's not going to be arithmetic. It's definitely geometric. To decide what the R is, you take the second term divided by the first, which would be negative 2. So the formula here for a geometric sequence, remember, is this a sub n that looks like an exponential. Should, these are super simple to write the equations for. I need the first term, which here is negative 4, times my common ratio to the n minus 1 power. That's the whole thing. It's super fast. Now I can use that equation to find the 21st term. So I have a sub 21 equals the first term times the common ratio to the 21 minus 1 power. And I can just type that into my calculator and get the term value. Let's see, well, negative 4, make sure you put the r value in parentheses. And that is the term. Negative 4,194,000. Okay, that's the term you want. So now the question is find the sum of the first 16 terms. Now, unlike the arithmetic that was number 5 that was on the last video, this sum, I don't need to do a lot of crazy work. I'm using this formula up here. All I need is the first term, which I know is negative 4 the common ratio, and the value of n. So what I have is the sum of the first 16 terms. So I need the first term, which is negative 4, times 1 minus. Now here's where people make a mistake. You need to put our negative r value in parentheses. Now the exponent is just n, which is 16. Here's the other spot for mistake. The denominator is 1 minus r, not 1 minus n. Then you just type that in your calculator. Okay, so very carefully, let's type that in. So I'll make a fraction. If you can't make a fraction, it's okay. It'll still work for you. So negative 4 times 1 minus parentheses, negative 2 to the 16th, close your upper parentheses. The denominator is 1 minus negative 2. And that would be the sum. All right, the reason it is smaller, I'll talk about this once I write it down, 87,380. The reason that number is smaller than the term, or much bigger, but the other one's like negative 4 million, and then we jump to 87 million, 87,000, is because they're alternating signs. So as the negative part gets bigger, we have to then add on. Like it's just like keeping the sum smaller than you would think for that such a big negative term. All right, finally, express the sum using sigma notation. Now, it doesn't say evaluate here, so all we're doing is writing the sum from term 1 to 99 of your equation. And all you have to do is write the equation in here, and that's it. It doesn't say evaluate. So you use sigma notation, the se sequence formula, and make sure your indexes are correct. Number 7, what is the sum given here? And you need to show each term in the expansion. So a couple ways that you can do that. I'll show you the way that I think it's best. I need to list out the terms for n equals, it says from 1 to 5. Now, two ways to do this. I'll show you the first way. First way you can do this is to put that n into the formula. So you would have to take negative 3 to the first minus 9, which would end up being negative 12. Then you would have to take negative 3 squared minus 9, 9 minus 9 is 0. And you would do that for each and every one of those. And that's fine. The other way you can do this, if you want to make it faster, would be to type the equation into your y equals. So if I type in here negative 3 to the x instead of n, then minus 9. If I go to the table, see how at term 1 I got negative 12 and to term 2 was 0? I can find 3, 4, and 5 just by looking here as well. So I would have the next 3 I'll write out will be negative 
36, 72, and negative 252. So all you have to do now is take these numbers and add them up. All right, and when we add them up, you can do that. It's negative 228. Now, if you want to verify this, no one says you can't check your answer. It just says you have to show the terms in the expansion. Use your calculator. Use the sigma notation to check your work. Right? You know how to do math here. Oh, it's super quick. X equals 1 to 5 of your equation. Negative 3 to the X minus 9. Hit enter. That's the same answer. So you know you did your work right. That took less than 10 seconds to check. All right, number 8. Given the sequence, first determine what type of sequence it is. Well, the signs are alternating again, so that looks like it's going to be geometric. And I'm going to just say why. I'm going to say that the R value here, well, if I take negative 1 divided by 4, would be negative 1 fourth. And same thing over here, if I took 1 fourth divided by negative 1, that's also negative 1 fourth. So that's our R value. Find the eighth term of the sequence. All right, it says leave it as a fraction. So if I'm doing a geometric sequence here, I'm going to use this equation. So I'm going to have a sub 8. I need the first term of my sequence, which is 4, times my common ratio. And the exponent is n minus 1. So I'm going to type that into my calculator. So 4 times negative 1 fourth or negative 0.25 works to the 8 minus 1 power. Now, that's a really ugly number. It has an E, that's scientific notation, simplest fraction form. Remember, you go math, enter, enter. You get that fraction, and there's your answer. And finally, write the equation for the sum of the first 100 terms using sigma notation. Now, you don't have to evaluate. You just have to write it in sigma notation. First 100 terms means you start at term 1, go up to term 100. Then you write your equation. So what was our equation right here? We had 4 times negative 1 fourth to the n minus 1. And that's the whole thing. All right, number 9. A couple ways you can do this one. I'm going to do it the fast way, but I'll show you how you can do it longer way as well. Given a sequence determined by a sub n equals 3 n minus 5, a1 is the first term, what is the sum of the 500 first term through the 1,000th term? Show how you arrive at your solution. My suggestion is to use sigma notation. When I look at this a sub n formula, I know it's going to be an arithmetic sequence because that's a linear equation. My suggestion is you take sigma here, you throw that a sub n formula after the sigma, and you know you are adding up from the 500 first term to the 1,000th term. And then you pop that guy into your calculator, and you get an answer. Right? So we're going from term 501 to term 1,000. And then my equation is 3n minus 5. And there's your sum. Now that was fast if you thought to use sigma notation. So that would be 1,123,215. Now if you did not think to use sigma notation, that's okay. You can do this a different way. It's just going to take longer. You could use the S sub n formula here. Okay? You could use that guy. The only thing is if you use this one, you just have to use a little bit more work. So we would find, you have to find the number of terms, what n is. Remember we talked when we did sigma notation that n is the top index minus the bottom index plus 1. So here that would be the top index. Even if you didn't have sigma notation, you know it's the top number is 1,000 minus 501 plus 1. So let's verify. That would be 499 plus 1, you're adding up 500 terms here. So that would be your n. So sum of 500 terms will be 500 over 2 
Now the first term is not the first term in the sequence, it's the first term you're adding up. So you would need to find the first term you're adding up, which is a sub 501. And I would put that in this original formula they gave you. 3 times 501 minus 5. One four nine eight. So that goes here. One four nine eight plus, and I have to find the one thousandth term, the last term I'm adding up, and that's going to be two thousand nine hundred ninety five. And let's type that sum in and see if we get the right answer. Okay, so we'll have. 500 divided by 2, which is 250, times, what was our first number again? Uh, 1498 plus 2995. And that's the same number. That was a lot more work, though. <laughs> it took a lot more time. It's probably like quadruple the amount of time it took to do sigma notation. So the point of me showing you both is that both processes work. You do what works for you, but if you can recognize you can use sigma, it's going to be a lot faster. All right, that's the end of this video. That's the end of part one. If you can do those nine questions really well, you should be able to get a 65 on your test.